Angeles, the great homeless organization here in Los Angeles, and interview uh, Joel Roberts, the executive director, talking about what he's trying to do and what struggles he's up against, and what his goals are and what progress they're making toward those goals, and then have surveys of the clients online so people can look at what the clients think of the organization, and then have you know, some people with some training go out and do a thorough assessment of the organization and write it up in a page and a half friendly narrative and have financial data. But if, if the public had broad access to that kind of information alone, they would understand the whole arena much better and they'd have much greater confidence and they would give more and they would and they would have more trust, I think. So let's do one more question and then uh, yes. Um, ideally, what difference in venue would you have between for-profit and non-profit uh, companies or organizations? And if, if you don't want any difference, uh, why not right now just start a for-profit company that does good without any of the labels of charity and non-profit? Well, I think if you think about it, there are a lot of for-profit companies that do good. You know, we've been trained to think that there's this dividing line that the nonprofit sector helps people, the for profit sector doesn't help people. But none of us would say that Google doesn't help us, or that the Toyota Prius doesn't help us, or that, you know, that the supermarket doesn't help us, or that the electric company doesn't help us. So, you know, <clears throat> I think. Catherine Fulton at the Monitor Institute has coined this phrase that I love called the social singularity, where there's no longer a compartmentalization of you do good, you don't do good. I, I never understood why we need one set of economic rules to put sneakers on every kid's feet, but a different set of economic rules to put a plate of food on, on, uh, on every kid's um, table. I mean, I sort of ventured into the radical notion in the book that we don't need a separate nonprofit ethic at all. Yes, we need all these organizations working on all of these problems, but we don't need a separate set of rules by which they ought to do them. Tax deductibility, yeah, we should have that, but everything else that works in the market, why, why would we want to abandon all that and hamstring these organizations otherwise? So, uh, and I have more time, but I don't, I don't, uh, what time is it? Yeah, i got like five more minutes, but I don't yeah. want to keep everybody here. So if anyone has one question, maybe? All right, in the back. Uh, I think, well, that's more of, I guess, a suggestion. I think a third sort of dimension you could add would be what percentage of tax dollars go to general administrative uh, government entities and what percentage go to, like, social services and actual helping people. I think that is just sort of another place you could take it, um, how charities are more effective or less, I don't know what the actual figures come out to, than tax dollars and just sort of having people think about uh, private organizations compared to public and uh, something to think about. Yeah, no, no, it's interesting, yeah, you know, would you, I think that I think that if you gave the nonprofit sector the same freedoms you give to the for-profit sector, if you allowed it to attract massive capital, to spend that capital on advertising, to indoctrinate people the way Coca-Cola does about drinking caffeine and the notion of doing something about AIDS, you could achieve pretty significant redistributions of income via the nonprofit sector. Um, it wouldn't all have to happen via government, so I, I agree. Well, thank you very, very much. It's been fun to talk to you. <laughs>